Hi guys, welcome to another session. Today we're going to look at the drug Propofol, probably one of the most commonest found drugs on the intensive care unit and in anaesthetic practice worldwide. We're going to have a look at presentation, mechanism of action, the usages of Propofol, some of the effects and side effects, and then the pharmacokinetics. When we think about the presentation of Propofol, it's a phenol derivative. Its chemical structure is shown on the screen now, and you need to be able to reproduce that for FRCA primary. It's lipid soluble, and it comes in a preparation of a white water lipid emulsion of either 1 or 2 percent. The emulsion component contains soybean oil and it contains purified egg phosphatide, neither of which potentially should cause allergic reaction in people who are allergic to soybean or eggs because of the purification process and the fact that the proteins have been removed. It's poorly water soluble, it's got a pKa of 11 meaning it's a weak acid and it's almost completely unionized at a pH of 7.4. The induction dose of propofol is 2 to 3 mg per kilogram, and the dose for ongoing ITU sedation or procedural sedation varies depending on the level of RAS you want for the patient or responsiveness in terms of what you're doing. When we think about the mechanism of action, it's not actually completely clear for propofol, even though we use the drug quite extensively. It's thought to maybe reduce the opening of sodium channels within the neuronal membranes, but that's hypothesized only. There's also a hypothesis that it potentiates glycine and GABA receptors and possibly also has an inhibitory effect on uh, NMDA glutamate receptors within the neuronal tissue as well. When we think about the use of propofol, commonly it's used for the induction and maintenance of anaesthesia and particularly TIVO if you're trying to avoid volatile anaesthetics. It's used for procedural sedation within the emergency department and it can also be used for the sedation of patients who are intubated and ventilated on the ITU. And that's probably one of the most commonest usages for propofol. When we think about the effects, you can split them into the systemic groups. Cardiovascular wise, it leads to a drop in systemic vascular resistance and a drop in blood pressure. It also leads to a drop in cardiac contractility. When you think about the respiratory system, it's a respiratory depression, depressant and can actually lead to apnea also. There is a marginal phenomena other than sedation within the CNS that can lead to excitation. About 10% of patients on the usage of propofol will get excitation, like a dystonic or choreoform actions. And anyone who's used this for anesthesia will, notice, will have seen this on induction of anesthesia. It can also be used to drop the patient's ICP. From a GI point of view, it's got an anti-emetic action. And from a miscellaneous point of view, it can cause pain on injection, normally in smaller vessels. And it can also turn your urine and your hair green. When we think about the pharmacokinetics of propofol, it's a heavily protein bound drug. It's 98% protein bound, and that means it's got a very large volume of distribution. Its action is short due to this rapid uh, distribution into the tissues within the body. It's largely hepatically metabolized into gluconeride and quinol. 40 and 60 percent respectively and then the metabolites are excreted in the urine. As I've mentioned before, um, people who have intolerances to egg and soya bean um, don't necessarily get any effect from propofol because of the purification process and the way it is uh, processed and removed. Elimination half-life for propofol is about 5 to 12 hours and the only other important point of note is that it can be toxic in small children. There are a number of studies that suggest that they can develop a lipidemia, which leads to essentially respiratory problems and acidosis. It's therefore not recommended for ITU sedation in children under the age of 60.